Hi, I'm Dr. Chuck Betters. I want to welcome you to Ask Dr. Betters, and I want to invite you to take some time to go to our website at markinc.org, M-A-R-K-I-N-C.org, and take a little survey of all of the resources that we have available, and I know many of them will be a blessing to you personally. You know, we live in an age of technology. Technological change in the past 10, 20 years has been incredible. When you stop and think that just a few short years ago, no one had a cell phone. No one even knew what a cell phone was. And now today, it's almost as though everyone has at least one, maybe two. And on and on the list can go because technology has changed everyone's life. Now, the Bible doesn't talk a whole lot about technology. It talks about living in a changing world. It talks about adjusting to the environments in which we find ourselves. It talks about cultural relevance, but it doesn't talk about cell phones or computers or all of the things that constitute the technological changes that are taking place in our world today. One of the questions uh, we received goes something like this. I recently graduated college and started my first real job. Now I want to find my special someone, but the dating scene, at least the one I was hoping for, uh, where you go out and actually meet people in person doesn't seem to exist. So I am considering joining one of those online dating things, you know, Match, eHarmony, Christian Mingle, something like that. Is there anything wrong with doing that? Well, you know, obviously the Bible has nothing to say about Match.com or eHarmony. Uh, the Bible does have a lot to say about who we will choose to live our lives with. The second most important decision you will ever make in your life is who you will marry. The most important decision is whether or not you will trust Christ as your Savior and Lord. But next to that, the most important decision you'll ever make is who you will marry. And so many people marry the wrong person. You know, I don't believe any legitimate uh, website or program or application can pick a spouse for you. There's only so much that data can uh, achieve. There's only so much that a, an algorithm can achieve for you. There's only so far uh, Christian Mingle can go. In fact, I, I'm a little, um, maybe the word is disappointed in some of the websites that talk about finding God's choice for you. Somehow or another, God's choice for you has in their minds been reduced to an algorithm, to some uh, data search, some personality inventory. Now there is nothing wrong with meeting people by way of these different applications. But to make your decision based upon the criteria that they use to encourage you to make that decision can indeed become wrong, can indeed become fatal. So I believe it's important that you use a, a variety of tools uh, that are available to you that the scripture commands you to use. Uh, that is the support of your family, asking your parents what they think of this individual, uh, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety introducing whoever you might meet online to other people uh, and finding out from them what their impressions are, uh, looking for someone who has their values straight, who has their priorities uh, in order. That is the priority of every one of us needs to be first, our relationship to Christ. Are you seeing this person growing? Are you growing as the result of being with that person you meet online? In fact, that's one of the measuring sticks that you use in any relationship. Are you closer to Christ as the result of being with so-and-so? Uh, are you growing in your relationship to Christ as the result of being with so-and-so? If the relationship is taking you in the opposite direction, then you know that person is not right for you. And so there are, there are measuring sticks, there are tests that you can apply to anyone you might meet, whether you meet them uh, in, a, in a, a school somewhere or in church or, or online, wherever you might meet them, you apply certain tests to see whether or not this person is causing you to progress in your relationship to Jesus Christ. So their first relationship is with the Lord. How are they growing? Are they growing? Is there, 
Is there constant pressure on your relationship that is negative pressure, sexual temptation, uh, breakdowns in communication, things like that, that you then you, you, you put those things to the test to see whether or not what you discovered online and who you discovered online fits the biblical criteria for what will constitute a great husband or a great wife. And so their relationship to Christ is foremost. Secondly, their relationship to the authority structure under which God has placed them. That is, are they obedient to their parents? Uh, are, they, are they good employees? Are they good employers? Are they fair? Are they honest? Are they practicing the fruits of the Spirit? Is there a lot of anger? Is there a lot of uh, uh, cheating? Is there a lot of discord in your relationship? Are you always fighting with one another? And so that's where you have to put your emotions in check at that point. You have to say, let's take a deep breath here and see whether or not the relationship is growing according to the scriptures. So even though the Bible doesn't have anything to say about eHarmony or Christian Mingle, uh, it does apply certain tests to any relationship that we have. Is it growing? Is it dynamic, etc.? And I think it's also important for you to not put your faith and your trust in what a computer has to say is the right choice for you. Uh, there, there are so many things that could go wrong. Uh, I would initially have other people with you. I would not meet somebody alone. I would not go out with them alone. I'd go out in a public setting somewhere. Uh, I would make sure that other people, if, if you find a chemistry between the two of you, that other people are brought into the mix right away to help discern whether or not that person is right for you. Check out what church they're involved in. If you're a Christian, you have no business dating a non-Christian. And if you have, and that, and that doesn't, it goes even one step further. Even if they are a Christian, if they're not a growing Christian, you have no business dating them. So you need to find out whether or not that person is engaged in ministry, whether the people in his or her church uh, have confidence and faith in them. So in other words, you gotta do your homework. You can't just trust that a computer is going to set this up for you. Technology does have its place, but the scriptures take precedence over technology. And so you have to look at the biblical principles that ought to govern a relationship. And that's what you hang your hat on. I hope this helps.